Well, I will pass over now to, uh, to Mahurihuri Marae and they're um, very lucky that they, um, well, that I've been able to work with them over the last couple of months as they have been preparing their CHIP application. Um, they've done such a wonderful um, job where they've had a really strong team and they've been working together on it. I've really appreciated the way that they have um, really looked, where they've really excuse me, look to their whanau for the talents that exist within them and also making sure they're bringing all the right expertise on board to support them through this process. Um, today we have an amazing lineup. So um, you will be able to see that they put a lot of effort into their um, presentation today. It's going to be um, opened by Julian Wilcox, who will um, introduce the kaupapa and mihi on uh, behalf of the Kama Atafai, and also okay. be talking about um, to Taumata as well. And then we have Christine Panapa coming back to join us and she will be sharing about the history of the marae and its housing aspirations, which is where um, the birth of the Kana Atafai came from. Following that, Anne Candy, uh, many of you may know her. Um, she will give insight into the application process and also she's got some observations uh, to share that hopefully you will all enjoy learning from. So kia ora. I will pass over to you, Julian. Nā koe, Jena. Kia ora tātou. E ki tēnau i a koe e kara e nia. Ko te tūmana ko ia e ora pai mai nā koe i te kāinga. Me tāko mōhi o kei tōtaha a la net e tautia ki ana i a koe. Nō reira e kara e te pāpā e nia. E nei kōrero e mōhi o ana koe. E harai te kōrero tau hau ki a koe. Ngā kōrero e pāna ki a tamā hure hure. Nō roto tunu i a hoki a ngā. My name is Julian Wilcox. Uh, I'm, I'm the chief cup of tea maker at the Mahuruhure Marae. Uh, my bosses are Auntie Christine, Auntie Anne Candy, uh, and Tracy, and Johnny, and Sonia, and Uncle John. In, in other words, the Pana Papana. Um, te Mahuruhure Marae has its foundations in the Hokianga. Um, the name Te Mahuruhure actually comes from Tahiti. It's a Hawaii name. We have connections through to Apirananata, It was in fact Apirananata with the work of his very dear friend, Te Rangihirua Sipirapak, who named one of our marae in Te Mahurehure in Hokianga. So our connections go back thousands of years. We are as Hokianga, as Hokianga can be, aside from the fact that we're in Tamaki Makoto. And our marae reflects the name of our hapu of Te Mahurehure. Uh, te Mahurehure marae exists not just for descendants of Te Mahurehure. Te Mahurehure marae exists for Māori of Tamaki Makoto. It is supported by mana whenua of Tamaki Makoto and it welcomes people of Tamaki Makoto. That philosophical statement is crucial because it underpins the work of Te Kaingatawhai. And I would like to uh, hand over to Auntie Christine and Auntie Anne in a minute to talk through that. Um, because Te Mahure Hure is a hapu, a whanau uh, that looks after and manaki's people. Uh, that is a hokianga philosophy. Um, and as uh, Lynette said, she's with Matua Nia Wikaira. I don't think that's even can be more encapsulated than the work that was done by Matua Nia's grand uncle, uh, the late uh, Harding Leith, who is an integral part of our marae at Mahurihure marae. Uh, and it's important, I think, to acknowledge that given the history of Anzac Day and the seminal documentary, uh, Kia Mata Ururoa, uh, that featured on Anzac Day just last week. Uh, so that's Te Mahurehure uh, Marae. Uh, it is located, for those who don't know, in Point Chevalier in Tamaki Makoto. The name of our Farehui is Kuiawai. One cannot be Te Mahurehure if one does not descend from Kuiawai. And as with every good Ngāpuhi story, there is some conjecture about who's the tuakana, 
and I can see my phenomenal Annette laughing away because we are very closely related uh, to two other hapu uh, in Hokianga. Uh, they are Ngaitu, uh, the name of which is actually Ngaitu Tau, uh, and also uh, the other hapu uh, is Ngati Pākau. Uh, we are the descendants of three tupuna, us, Kuyawai, to Mahurihure. Uh, our relations, Ngati Pākau, descend uh, from a female tupuna called Mahuri, uh, who is a sister, and a brother called Kohuru or Kohatu. Uh, now there's conjecture as to who the tuakana is, and we've got our kōrero, and Ngātū's got their kōrero, and Ngāti Pākau's got their kōrero. Suffice it is to say, I think that we are, we are family. And so you will hear lots of those kōrero at Te Mahuru Hire Murai. So that's us. We've been around over 50 years now. Um, you can see the whānau there in our slide. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do before I hand over about the Kaingatapai is talk about our whare wānanga uh, that will be opened uh, later this year called uh, Te Taumata Okupe. I feel slightly insufficient talking about it given that my kaumātua Nia is on this call. Uh, and if you want to hear more about kupe, you can talk to Matua Nia. Uh, but the Taumato Kupe is the dream of two people in particular, Emeritus Professor Patu Hohepa and Matua Lereata Makiha. And this is their dream to establish a truly Māori, a truly Ngāpuhi, a truly Hokianga, Farewānanga, uh, not just for the people of Hokianga or indeed for the descendants of the Mahurihure, uh, but to reinstill reinforce and re-implement the traditional wānanga learning environment that our matua, patu hohepa, experienced as a five-year-old in what was called the blackouts of the whare wānanga and mahurihure, and what our matua, Rerata Makiha, experienced as a mature learner in the 1970s. And you can see the fruits of that learning environment in the work that they have both done for Māori Dim, over the years and up to the present day. The whare taumata o kupe, as you can see in that slide, uh, represents not just the contemporary style of learning, but also is reinforced by the traditional learning forum, whereby we teach our people at night without light, and they are taught uh, between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. once a week. That learning environment is a truly hokianga, ngāpuhi learning style. It was, as far as we can understand, began all the way back in the stages of io, uh, but was certainly reinforced by people like Papa Huri here, Te Atua Wera, Aparehama Taungu, Hone Tōia, all the way down to the time of uh, Matua Pat, and Matua Rereata's parents under the tutelage of Wideko Farero, uh, Lynette can talk more about that, and then in the time of Rereata and Patu. Uh, this whare, Taumato Kupe, as I say, will be open late, later uh, this year. It specifically references our tupuna, Kupe Nuku, who is a truly a hokianga identity. But it also represents all the kōrero about Kupe around Aotearoa, that, as Matua Nia Wipaita would say, uh, mentions four different kupe personalities. Our focus, though, is on our tupuna kupe tuku. That's enough from me. I promised I wouldn't go on too long. Uh, it's now my privilege and honour to hand over to my aunties. Uh, first of all, uh, to my auntie Christine uh, Panapa, truly the foundation of Te Mahure Hure Marae. And I will leave you here. Uh, nā rera, tēnā kūtu, tēnā kūtu, kia ora tātou katoa. Watching you recite your kōrero was just beautiful. And up until yesterday, I have to say to everybody that I thought I could be like Julian and recite 53 years of the history of this marae. But I thought, goodness me, 50, 53 years is going to take a long time for me to get through. So four o'clock this morning, I sat down and I thought I better put a pen to paper and write down what I'm actually going to say. And uh, But first of all, um, 
Kia ora to you, Kelly, and I want to say thank you, Jen, to Matapihi and everybody that is here today on this hui. Um, seeing everybody um, tell us who they are, yeah, it's great. And, and thank you very, very much for the opportunity to be able to call it all today. Ko whakatere te maunga, ko hokianga te, ko hokianga nui a kupe te moana, ko nga tuki matawaurua te waka, ko te mahuruhuri te tapa te hapu, ko nga puhi te iwi, ko te mahuruhuri te marae, ko kuia wai te whare, ko Christine Pānapa toko ingoa. Tihei mauri ora, ki a tātou katoa. Thank you very, very much, Jen for giving to Mahuruhure Cultural Marae Society and Corporation the opportunity, but more importantly, the privilege for me to be able to tell the story um, about the humble beginnings of Te Mahuruhure Cultural Marae. The opportunity came way back after the Second World War in 1969 to be able to purchase the land here at Te Mahurihure, at Tamaki Makoto, My late mother, Kiri Tafai King, and my father, the late Alan, who was a Pākehā, the late Alan King, along with my mum's brothers and sisters, who were very active in the Māori Community Centre here in Auckland, and two of my grandmother's sisters. Therefore, Karo was for us, as to Mahurihure, to have our own marae here in Tāmaki. At the end of 1968, uh, sorry, an opportunity arose when my Auntie Mary and my Uncle John Wilcox, who lived behind our marae, present marae here today, at number 181 Premier Ave, rang my dad to say the Point Chevalier rugby club behind at their home was being sold for $29,000. Ahui was how to discuss purchasing the four acres of land with the old tin shed, which had a dirt floor and was used as the rugby club. It was a rugby club training shed. The whānau had to find a deposit of $3,011 to secure the sale. So the whānau in Auckland got together and they made a koha and they found, found their $3,011. A committee was formed and my Pākehā father became the treasurer. A mortgage was taken out with the ASB bank for the rest of the money, which my dad and his committee had the response, the respons were responsible for paying the mortgage. Every month, my dad would say to my mum, come on, Kerry, the mortgage is due next month of $500. My mum, who was an excellent cake maker, would bake her many cream puffs and her banana cakes, set up her stall outside the community uh, Pamua post office and religiously sell her delicious cakes. Mum would arrive home and she'd say to my dad, Alan, I made $60 today. And my dad re would reply, we need a lot more than $60, Kerry. So every week, my mum would toil hard to do her baking but I just want to take a moment out to reflect back on those days with my mum because the pressure that was on her to realise the money that was needed for the mortgage. And there were days when things just didn't go right for my mum with her baking. But this particular day I do remember well. Something wasn't right with her batch. You could tell by the way the furry of concern deepened along her brow. Was it the flower? Of course, they didn't make flour like the old champion mills used to roll out. You could always rely on them to get it right. This new lot of flour makers, well, she'd say, you can never tell what you're getting. Maybe I need a little bit more butter. Round and around, she'd stir. She stopped to check her work every couple of minutes. This would be her last lot. A quick peek in, a, a quick peek, a peek in the oven and her smile was back on again. The golden brown cream puffs were almost ready to join the two dozen or so ready to call on the wire cake tray on the table. This last batch was be no different from the first golden brown morsel to the last. 
Everyone had to be just perfect. No second rate cooking for my mother. Her customers will be waiting outside the Pamir post office in the morning. You can't sell them anything but the best. This was her way. Everything had to be just right. This wasn't just a one-off cake store. It was a regular Friday ritual for her. This went on for two years. This was my mother's way of helping out. It was hard work, but she never complained. Her cream puffs and sponge cakes were legendary because they were what brought the money in to pay the mortgage. Then she used to organize and get all the whanau that were attached to the marae. And we, by this time, we had quite a big contingent of whanau that lived here in Tamaki that had actually come from Weimar to live. The 28th Māori Battalion, everyone was involved. And this was the fundraising of the 60s. The families would put together a box of goodies. The goodies were wrapped up so no one could see what was inside. The boxes were then auctioned off to the highest bidder. But what my father could never understand was that my mum would always bid for her box. And she would be paid, my dad would say, but you've already paid for it. She said, oh, you keep quiet. My money that I'm going to bid for this box is going to keep helping to pay the mortgage. They were great fun and the money was always good, but then it wasn't quite enough. Then came the day in 1971 when John and I became involved. We were 21 year olds at this time. Then came the socials and we thought, okay, we'll become the mega money raisers. And actually that helped to still the hearts and brought smiles to the faces of those that were struggling to keep up the mortgage payments. For $3 entry, you could have a free glass of alcohol or maybe two or three, a great kai and a kani kani to the music of the Andal sisters, Prince Tui Teka, Bunny Walters, the Radars, the Impacts and many more entertainers, Māori entertainers. The, 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 um, the high fives, they all fuck a papa to this marae because Charlotte, who was the lead singer, she's a tāwhai and she married Kawana Pohi. So the socials were so popular that the doors had to be shut at nine o'clock. There was no more room in the, in the hall. They were profitable too. With all our raffles we did, $800 was raised from one social alone. John and I decided to do this every three months. Buses came from north and south. No one wanted to miss out. Back then, there was also housing. Auntie Eddie Smith and my cousin Veronica, that was their domain. It seemed that there was a lot of housing going on back, back, in the house, back in the 60s. But the thing is that it sure did bring in quite a bit of putia. The Sunday sports events at the Marae also brought in much money and manpower. After four or five years of hard slogging, the mortgage was finally paid over. Uh, sorry, paid off. Over the duration of time from 1969, our 2 Māori Battalion were very involved with our marae. Colonel Peter Awatere had taken part in writing up the constitution with my dad and Uncle John, Uncle Sam and others. Over a period of 30 years, weddings, tangi, conferences, sport days, church and many, many kaupapa were held here at Te In the year 1999, our marae looked very tired and needed needed a very, very bad makeover. I became the chairperson and my husband and I, pardon me, led the charge to rebuild our whare. And I wanted to say to you, Kelly, that Mike Pare Kofai, he also used the whare here when, uh, at Tamahurihure to do all his artworks. And that was great for us. Anyway, I move on. Tamahurihuri Marae had only received a small funding donation to renovate the toilets, and that's all we had ever received because there was no funding back in those days. Our income was made up of membership fees and fundraising. Plans were put in place to rebuild, budgets were created, and my husband and John became the project manager as he was the only one prepared to do the money, uh, the mahi for free. A whānau member became, he was our architect, he drew up the plans, he said, okay guys, you need to find 1.5 million. So this, we went out and we were very fortunate that we applied to the, um, geez, it's just gone out of my head at the moment, but never mind, keep the play. We were luck, very, very fortunate that we received that funding too, to redo our, our, our new marae. 
John gathered up all his whānau who were tradesmen and paid them for their services. April the 19th, 2009, our new Tamahuruhuri Marae was reopened by our then the Governor General, Sir, Atten, um, Sir Anan Sutton and my whanaunga Timutehiuhu. It was a hard 10 year slog, but we achieved and accomplished our rebuild. Moving on, we're now in our 40th year. Tracy had been nominated by our Komato Queer to be the manager, as she had, was now showing that she had the business skills to take over to the next, take us to the next level. Back in 1999, before my late dad passed away, he and I had a discussion about the land at the Marae, as we had three titles. Dad said, Christine, you make sure you use the land at the back of the Marae, which has a separate title, wisely. And he said, and I mean wisely, don't give it away. 2003, the Marae Committee worked together and we wrote up a feasibility study. And the building of Papakainga at the back of our, our marae came out on top. But the questions were, where is the money going to come from to build? Who's going to be living in these houses? The land at the back of the marae needed to be sorted as it had an open space zoning. I set to for my next challenge. I was told by a lovely lady at the Auckland City Council that the land at the back belonged to the Crown. I thought, wow, you and I are going to be having a big scrap. The receipts from the purchase of the land were found in my late dad's boxes. And I had great delight going to see this lovely lady to prove that the land belonged to Te Mahurihuri Marae Cultural Society. Te Mahurihuri Marae made a decision we would do the exercise to see if would we, we would be able to build papakainga on our land. 2014, the notification of the proposed Auckland Unitary Plan came into play. I personally attended all these meetings on behalf of our marae because I thought if I did not do this, we could miss out. During the time, during this time, the marae made submissions to build our papakainga under the Māori Purposes Zoning Hui in Tamaki, but we were very, very fortunate that having the Māori unit within the Auckland City Council, people like Shane Cook and all of them came, came to the marae to guide us and give us help. And that was a big uh, buzz for us because we achieved what we set out to do. August 2016, the marae was successful and we achieved the green light to have our whenua change from an open space to residential. November 2016, I was very, very fortunate to meet Robert Macbeth from Te Puni Kōkiri. And I've been working with Robert from 2016. And I have to say, I pay a big, um, I pay a tribute to Robert because he's the guy that's really worked beside Te Mahurihu and Marae and guided us to where we are today. Also, John Lana, the manager from Housing, Urban and Development, he, was, he came to the marae, he heard what we were doing, and he, he was the first gentleman that spoke to us about becoming a housing provider. And we thought, goodness me, he's going to help us to fulfill our housing aspirations. At this moment, I would like to remember my mum and dad, who after the war, especially in the 1950s and 60s, helped my many aunties and uncles, who had come from Waima, Hokianga to now live in Auckland. Mum and Dad helped, and I counted just yesterday, 11 Fano to buy their own homes through the Māori Affairs Scheme and the Family Benefit Contribution as their deposits. Receiving guidance and learning how to become a chip from John Lana and especially Jean De Ben has been a tedious experience uh, for our team, but every day I see the results are more and more positive. The struggles of our aunties and uncles 40 years ago and the struggles our young ones are having today, housing is still the same. We've been through the environment. We have been, this marae has been through the environment court twice. We've jumped over many obstacles, but the main purpose for all of us here at Te Mahurihuri is that we look forward to achieving a dream come true when we open our 14 new whare. So today, as the chairperson of Te Mahurihuri Marae, I have to thank 
our business arm to Kanga Atafai for the 100% support that we received from them, the directors of Kainga Atafai, to Puni Kokiri, especially, who still support us to this day, Jen Ben and her team from Tamatapihi, that still support us to this day, my loyal um, Marae Committee. I say a very big mihi to Auntie Anne Candy, who I've been working with for many for the last 40, 50 years. She's been tremendous. She's worked hard through the policies to obtain our CHIP status. My husband, John, who keeps my feet firmly grounded and keeps me sane. But also with my husband are my children, Tracy, John, Sonia, David, Dan, Rere Moana. Their children, my mokopuna, my mokopuna tūrua, and in September I will be receiving a new mokopuna or oh, be my 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 mokopuna tūrua, his his girlfriend's having a baby. So that we're looking forward to that arrival of another moko moko. So Tamahurihure Culture Marae is proud of the fact that our tūpuna oh, had oh. the hindsight. Oh, hey? Our, the Tamahuriwa Culture Marae is proud of the fact that our tūpuna had the hindsight and vision to foresee the economic stability this land would one day bring for Māori and eventually the community with their brave decision. So we, the Mahuruhuri Marae, are becoming a housing provider and we look forward to working with a team of prof professionals involved around governance, Housing New Zealand and everybody else that is going to make our housing dream come true. So, no reira, kumutuna kōrero, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tāta katoa. Kia ora. Oof. So, as you can see here, I want to say thank you to my, to my boy, David Pānapa. David is a great guy when it comes to visuals and um, as you can see on the screen, a lot of our people here that have been a part of Te Mahurihure and still are. Um, yes, Te Mahurihure Marae was, is well known throughout the Mutu. Anzac Day, as you can see here in front of us, that is um, a day we haven't been able to have it because of COVID, but we will resume our, our Anzac Days. So thank you very, very much, um, Jen, and your group and... Um, yeah, thank you for everything. But more importantly, thank you to everybody that's helped us to achieve and get to where we are today. And um, we look forward to um, when our houses are opened and which is not going to be too far away. And every day I go over there and um, I take the workmen. We have um, Asians building from Fare number eight to the end and we have Tongans building from number one to number seven. So like all of us here as Māori, we take them over, kai, pears, apples, whatever, rewana bread, but it's just going to be fabulous. So we look forward to the day when we can open our new uh, Tekai Ngātawhai, and uh, you're all welcome to be a part of it. Kia ora. That's me. Thank you, Christine. <clears throat> that was um, a lovely history on um, the marae and also the whakapapa about where you are today. Um, thank you for all the acknowledgements that you've given um, and congratulations on your mokomoko that is coming up <laughs> um, and just a yeah. <laughs> It was beautiful. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge um, that uh, Shane. Um, has left a um, chat for you just acknowledging the vision and materialization of your mahi, which is a tribute to your whānau, your whānau, your hopu, and those that have passed. Much respect. Kia ora. Uh, I'll pass over to you now, Anne. Thank you. Morena kia koutou. Um, I just, I just, I always get tearful. Um, when I hear the history of iwi, uh, because we know that struggles remain today and I don't believe that there should be struggles today. 
So thank you, Christine, for stirring up my my uh, my tear reservoir. Um, and you have no need to acknowledge me, Christine. Um, I have huge respect for you and John and all the Fano, and I thank you for encompassing me as a Fangai into your family. Uh, yes, right today. Today I am talking about our our, our journey as as um, building the Papakainga. And as you see on the screen, Tapuni Kokiri uh, were the first to put up their hands to, to give us a putias. And then along with, with the shovel ready program that, that came under um, Shane, uh, the Honorable Shane Jones's watch, uh, gave us enough to help our dream to become more than a vision, but to perhaps become a reality. And with huge support from Auckland Council all the way through, all the way through with the resource consents, the building consents, uh, guidance, um, uh, just, just a phone call away. Uh, the it is all about relationships. If you're going to do anything, it's all about relationships and Māori, know about relationships because relationships are, are the foundation stone of, of Māori. And so um, the relationships that have been built up that, that, that have fostered what we have been creating. Um, and, and, then, and then as we started our journey to have, to have Robert Macbeth, he was at Tapuni Kōkiri in Wellington, to still sit alongside us on our, our project control group up to today um, has been, has been a, a just an inspiration that realizes our aspiration. And, and I, I'm pleased to see that Robert is on today because I haven't seen him for some time. Thank you, Robert. Jen, Jen, you have been a gem. And, and, and we thank you so much for helping us through uh, what has been a, a, a trial <laughs> of, of, of getting things done um, at the level that, that is expected um, through a government ministry and agency. So thank you so much for all you have done for us. Um, there'll be people who have helped us that, that I've missed out, but I, I am just on, on the outskirts. Um, the whole of, of the credit goes to the Tema Huri Huri Marae Trust Board and, and to the Te Kainga Atawhai Directors. And, and, uh, and I acknowledge that. And it's ab been an absolute privilege to be sharing this amazing journey. But here we see what is our vision for the completed site. Our, our our aspiration has been to build 14 units um, of one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom configurations. And, and it's, it's, it's just amazing to know how, how infused every home is um, with what the journey we have taken has been infused into everything so that when you go into any of these units, you will feel the presence of Te Ao Māori. And, and, and that is key in what is being developed here. We, we were challenged at the time um, with the mantra that was going around, not just Tamaki Makoto, but going around um, Aotearoa. And it was, there's a critical shortage of affordable urban Maori housing. And, and this mantra was, was on, on the airwaves, it was on the TV screens, it was on reports, it was everywhere you went. Um, it was, you know, there's a, there's a critical shortage of affordable urban Maori housing. And, and here is this iwi who are, are sitting in 
on the boundary of the CBD of Auckland. How more urban can you get apart from Orake? Orake, Ngāti Whātua, Ki Orake. They're in the middle of, of the CBD. And here is Te Mahuruhure, just on the border, next to the zoo, next to Motat. And, you know, they're, they're, they're in a prime tourism cycle, triangle. And, and urban, urban shortage, there had to be a response. Oraka had, or, Oraka had already responded, but there was, there, was, there was the sense that came from the original constitution that, that the visionaries of the day had that there should be a papa kainga, there should be housing for, for um, Māori in the largest city in Aotearoa. And, and it kept pressing and pressing upon the hearts, the minds and the souls of, of the committee. And, and on the trustees. And so that was the readiness to take the plunge. So here's a bird's eye view of what the complex will look like when it's finished. And so you'll see it's not just, you know, one flat roof and, and it's not a long rectangular um, building. It, 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 has, it has special characters that make it different and it needed to be different. So I'll, I'll just go on now to, to the steps that, that Te Mahurihuri took and to Kainga Atafai directors took leading up to, to all of this. The first thing that had to be implemented and, and put into before the roofs, roofs were even put on was the essence of things Māori. So every decision was made around um, tikanga and takepu of, of the Māori world. And so the very first thing that we did, apart from um, organizing, a, 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 of setting up, constituting a project control group, was to set up a taumata. Um, because we couldn't go ahead without a taumata. And so our, our taumata um, consisted of um, Julian Wilcox and Reriata Makiha, Christine Payne, uh, Christine Payne, Christine Panapa, John Panapa, John Walters, and and. and they became the ones that were the kaitiaki of the whole project from the spiritual and cultural angle. Because you can get caught up, you can get caught up in all the corporate requirements and you can lose, lose yourself in, in the, the accountability and transparency and that of, of the reporting and, and and all the policies and all the things that, that are part of the corporate development, we wouldn't allow that to happen. We wouldn't allow that to happen. So our taumata um, helped us to retain tino rangatiratanga because we needed to ensure the retention of the mana of te mahurihuri marae and te kainga atawhai housing at top level decision-making and wherever possible, we wanted Māori architects, Māori planners, Māori builders, Māori staff to include Māori cadets and Māori apprenticeships and Māori subcontractors and to select a Māori project manager to understudy the, the corporate manager, project manager, because we wanted the future to, to also be developed so that, so that this this vision would continue to to bring about Maori housing into the future and that they would follow suit. So that was one of the things that we we were insisting upon and and we've managed to do that and and it's wonderful that we've managed to do that. So here here's the ground uh, being made ready 
for for our build and then the start of the of the first the ground floors and so all the way along here we you go along and you have your karakia you have your karakia every day you have your karakia if you go along there during the day and see any things that have that have, have been added to it um you'll hear about some other things as i speak further but it's it's just infused it's infused with um with wider tanga it's it's infused with te whakakoha rangatira tanga so that so that we constantly recognize the crucial input of our rangatira in their kaitiaki tanga role uh, of protecting our values our practices our mana they must be involved in the application of relationships with kaupapa and people at social cultural intellectual emotional economic and spiritual levels at every level at every level there must be a footprint of our, our, our rangatira and and because they are the protectors of the past the enhancers of the present and the visionaries of the future and 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 that was apparent today with with julian um julian could have done this whole presentation on his own uh, but he has allowed he's, he's allowed the women to speak and and um i i i appreciate that I um and I've mentioned the wider tanga, you know, at every stage, at every stage, there's never a time when you question, I feel like I feel like a a a a, a karakia. We have the karakia. I I, I feel like a, a stroll along memory lane as you walk past the their build. You stroll along memory lane because memory lane is what brings you back to the foundation trustees and 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 past history. When you build a house, a papakainga, when you build a, a papakainga, you're not building a house to house a family. You are building a contemporary chapter of a historic journey. That's the difference. Whoever are tenants in this papakainga become part of the whakapapa of a journey that is Tema Hurihuri's journey. And they have opened the door so that you can step inside and share that journey. It's an all encompassing vision that the original founders believed in. And, and today it's come to life. It's come to life. And with the caliber of the Taumata membership, the turning of the sod done by the Right Honourable Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, the porphyry that was held, the blessing, the hakari, the blessing was done by the Piopo Te Taitukaro, uh, Piopo Te Kitohi Pakahu, and, and the hakari and the fellowship that brought Te ao Māori, past, present, and future into the same space. And I, I want to acknowledge, I wrote down her name, Kofi Olsen. Kofi Olsen is on screen today. I want to acknowledge the pick that you have as, 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 your, um, as, as your screen for, for your um, presence today. That's what it's all about, Kofi. You, you have your pepe there. And, and, and when I looked at it, I thought, how beautiful that today that Pepe becomes part of this corridor and becomes part of this history. We're doing this for future generations. So thank you, Kofi, for having um, your Pepe on, on screen because um, it's not really about us. I regretted that I didn't have my mukos on screen. Um, so, so then, then I mentioned the kaitiaki tanga. Um, we have we have thought right through to kume kume. You know, there's always there's always challenges. There's always barriers. There's always walls to break down. There's there's always ways ways that you have to address these and navigate them and retain relationships. Now that that is a skillful thing to learn. It's an art form. 
And so, you know, we had to learn, okay, we've got to jump this hurdle. How will we do it? Sit around with, with, with our tomata. They have, they have the answers for everything because they don't speak themselves. They speak from their elders that, that have passed on generations ago. And here, hear that hear their elders speaking to them and and you know you can navigate your way through the most difficult times and a lot of ours were funding times to get funding you can navigate your way through and retain respectful relationships and that is really important for any of you that are thinking of of building um, a complex whether it's one or two units or whether it's 14 units like us or whether it's a hundred units, the challenges might seem bigger, but to a, a one or two bedroom complex, a small challenge is a big challenge at the time. And, and to a hundred, hundred unit complex, the challenge is just a bigger wall, but it's the same challenge and the navigation is just the same. It's just the same. You build up respectful relationships and, and, and when you, when you have, uh, people who are challengers to become supporters, the picture changes, the picture changes, and, 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 and you can sleep easy at night. Okay, now, now we see the second level starting to get put on the top. Um, and and this, is, this is really exciting because this actually reminded us that we are in an urban environment yet you don't hear traffic you don't have 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 signs everywhere you don't have commercial shops uh putting up placards beside you it is so peaceful so peaceful you you have bush all around on the boundary over 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 we're on the border of a stream and every unit will look out over the stream. Every unit will look over healing waters. Every unit will have rongo planted along the, the banks. And, and every unit will have a balcony that looks out over the rongo and over the stream. And, 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 and it's that sort of thing. You're not looking at a backyard that's looking out over a car park. You're not looking in your neighbor's, neighbor's windows. You're looking out over an environment of peace, harmony, and healing. And so the, the papakainga is built angled around the, the boundary of the stream. And, and so it's, it's a place where, where, where you'll get peace and, and healing. Uh, we also looked at Aata. We must develop respectful relationships in all that we do at all levels of dialogue and advocacy and have mutual journeys in, on common ground. This journey now isn't Te Mahuruhuru's journey alone. This journey is Te Puni Kokiri's journey. Th this journey is Auckland City Council's journey. This journey is Matapihi's journey. This journey is HUD's journey. This journey is Chira's journey. And, and this journey is everyone who visits this complex. It's their journey. And, and, and it's also a journey of a bygone era that we are uh, retaining the mana and, and the respect of. And, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful to know that this urban complex is part of more people's journeys than just Te Mahuri Huri. Here's the second floor being framed. And, and, and you know, it's just a powerful sense of, of, of honor. It's a sense of honor. It's, it's not a sense of a pride. It's a sense of honor that, that the, 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 the women, the Tupuna fire that Christine mentioned, this is them. This is their vision. This is them. 
and it's such an honor to know that that their vision is being captured here and now in the here and now uh, we're going to make sure look look and look at look at that you can see the sit person second floor is getting done isn't that exciting i hope you're excited because you know anyone can do this and and here we're going to make sure that the tenants learn to live by by the marama taka to our maori not by the gregorian calendar we want them to appreciate the 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 Maramataka so that we will we will be instilling that in them so that so that their seasons are according to the the moons the sun the stars and 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 Taumatara Kupe will be reinforcing that in, in the complex that's also they see both these are being built at the same time I mean, a papa kainga is mammoth enough, but to do a digital navigational indigenous um, um, kaupapa as well, um, that, that is, is, that's just remarkable. And so, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's just mind, mind blowing stuff, but, but they will be, they will be learning how, how to, to live, uh, breathe and, and, and have faith in, uh, Te marama tango te ao Māori, and 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 that in itself is is um, a healing and well-being connection that that is really important. We will ensure ah uh, tanga. We will ensure that we provide a safe space during the build and after it is completed. A korowai or manaki was placed by Te Taumata upon all personnel involved in the build to protect guide, advocate, restore, monitor, resolve, include, sustain, and create a place of safety, incorporating the spiritual, physical, environmental, emotional, and cultural realms of each individual, whether solitary or collective. We wanted every worker to know they were safe, whether they were Maori or whether they were Pacific Island, or whether they were Asian, um, we wanted to make sure that they felt safe. And just to, to save time, I will actually, I'll actually go on to, um, yeah, this, this one here shows me. At, at, at the front of it, you'll wonder what that is. Um, I just want to share something with you. In Te Mahuri Huri, Uanuku and his half-brother Kaharau fought, and Rahiri made peace between them. He instructed these two brothers to weave a flax rope long enough to go around Fidia Maunga. The rope was attached to Tuhoronuku, a kite, which after being launched came to rest against a puriri tree. Rahiri named that place Firinaki to lean against a support. The kite was hoisted again and flew further eastward before landing on the banks of the Taimarere River. Blown by the easterly winds, it then landed at Tahuna, near present-day Kaikohe. Its path became the boundary that Rahiri set between the Hokianga and Taumarere. He also degree, decreed that the Hokianga lands would go to Kaharo's descendants and the eastern lands of Taumarere to Uenuku's descendants. So that's how he set the peace between the two brothers. The, land, the kite landed, this side would be one brother's, that side would be another brother's. So that was to say that the people would have somewhere to live and reside and, 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 and it would be peaceful. We've now flown that kite to Tamaki Makaurau. And there it is on the corner of the Papakainga. That's the kite that has now come 
to say that people through through Tema Huri Huri have a place where they can live. And the kite is what will welcome every tenant and every person who visits the Papa Kainga. It's the kite of peace. It's the kite of Rahiri that welcomes everybody. So it is the, it, on the first unit so that you can't help it. It's the gateway. It's the gateway, the doorway, whatever you want to say. It's the welcome. It's the welcome. And, and it's still hovering. It goes along the sides and it goes on the, on the roof and it has landed to say, you belong here. You belong here. I think I'll end on that because I'll give some insights um, when, when uh, Chira uh, do their presentation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for listening and um, fly high. Thank you. Um, Tino Kreen, that was beautiful. I think I can, um, mm -hmm. for me, um, I could feel the wider in everything that you were saying. Mm -hmm. And as you were going through um, what you've been through, um, the journey of it, it really, for me, it reminded me of like the Manawa lines uh, that you would see in, in Tāmoko and really um, hit home about how mindful everybody was to retain the taumata um, and retain making sure that there was, that Māori were present at every part of the journey. And it is very easy. I know it's easy for me. Um, you know, I, I have a background in regulation. It's very easy to get caught up in process and paperwork and ticking boxes. And I think you've really hit home in terms of how important it is that even while all, while all of that busyness is going on, to never forget who we are, where we've come from, and what it is that we're wanting to um, achieve in our aspirations. Um, I really feel like you've summed it up so, so well um, in understanding our whakapapa, um, that where we are today is our contemporary chapter of what is a historical journey. Um, and that's certainly something that I'm going to take away um, today. So thank you very much for your kōrero. And I'm going to open it up. We, um, we are, um, you know, progressing on time, um, but we don't want that to, um, for anyone to feel that that hinders you from asking any pātai. Um, this is a moment of learning and sharing for all of us. And so if there are any pātai out there, um, we'll just you know, stop for a couple of seconds um, to give you some time that if you do want to come in, if you have any um, whakaro you would like to share or any pātai you would like to ask, um, you're welcome to do that right now. Kia ora koutou, um, kia ora Fai Christine, Auntie Anne, uh, Tracy, Johnny, David, um, koutou o te mahuri huri, just wanted to um, congratulate you um, on all the hard work you've done to provide um, for the wider community um, in such really sort of innovative ways. Um, I just had a question um, to you, I think for Christine probably. Um, did you, had you planned your papakainga well in advance and, and then thought about registration as a chip later on or in which kind of order did you decide to um, apply to become a chip? Because it seems to me like you've had plans and then found the funding and then on the back end you applied to be a chip. But I could be wrong. I'm just sort of asking that question. Kia ora, kia ora, Irene. Goodness me, it seems to be such a long time ago trying to remember what the process was. Maybe Tracy can jump in here. Um, our whakaro was always, what were we going to build? And who were these houses going to be for? 
for me personally, I'd been a landlord and I was not, I thought I was good at picking tenants because I'd worked for Housing New Zealand for many years. And I thought I was good at picking tenants for my own home, my own houses. But by crikey dick, I went through um, a few debacles with all of that. We were very fortunate enough to meet Robert Macbeth and John Lana. And I was a part of the where I listened to these men talking about, because their whakaro at that time was about looking at helping Māori to um, build papakainga on their whenua. So that was quite a while ago. That was probably 2014, 15, maybe, when that's in. As we went through the process with those gentlemen, um, because Alfano from, and Tracy will remember this, Alfano from down where I also come from, down in Tauranga, is it, what's the name of that organisation that's got a big building housing crowd down there? They, we went to many of their hoys also. And I think that's what did it for us. So it's been a long time in the making, Irene. Okay. You know, we're 2022 now. Mm -hmm. So it has taken, oh, well, it's probably not all that long, but it has taken a few years for us to get from, from, from that inception from then to here. So I think, yeah, we had decided way back then that we were going to look and see if it was going to be easier for us. The biggest problem we had was the whenua at the back because it didn't have, it was in another zoning. So it took a long time for us to work through all of that to get it changed from an open zone to residential. Yeah. Uh, kia, ora, kia ora, Christine Fire. fire. Um, I could probably had add to this as well. Um, this when this one was going through for, for, for funding, it was modeled on the expectation that all 14 Fano would be getting the income related rent subsidy. Um, obviously um, it would would have required a lot more government subsidy if the income related rent subsidy wasn't wasn't part of it. So right from the very start for this one, there was an expectation, actually a requirement in the funding agreement that the um, the properties would be managed by a registered community housing provider and that access to IRRS, hence the link, link with John Lana and, and HUD was quite critical, was was always a part of the part of the plan planning. And as for Tapuni Corkery was um, organizationally neutral as to what that registered CHP would be. Um, it could have, you know, at, at the early stages, we toyed with the idea that maybe um, um, Mahuri Huri Marai would um, in partner with one of the regis Auckland registered CHPs to get that um, to get that requirement across. But then it became pretty obvious that it made sense for the Marae itself to, 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 to go down the path and manage its own tenancies, hence the creation of Tikaianga Atafai and then the process of going through registration in its own right. So there is, an, there is a funding element there that, was, that required a CHP to be involved. Kapai? Tikaianga Atafai Housing Limited is a subsidiary company of Te Mahurihuri Cultural Marae Society Incorporated. Um, so that so that they 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 are a separate entity, and and Takanga Atafai are the ones that will be the chip holder. Mm. Yeah, the licensee. Yeah. So I was going to have the conversation. So um, it's probably I had a discussion with Christine. You know, two thousand fourteen, fifteen. And um, it's, it's, it's like um, Irene said, it's a, it's been a iterative process. So she um, probably they they made that decision to make the housing to do the housing quite a while back, um, and it was just these opportunities became available through legislation and changes in legislation. Then you know that I had a discussion with her. Oh, you know, there's a thing called a community housing provider. They might want to explore that. So the, it was it's a, almost been an organic process. This one, you could argue. I mean, you know, it's got a lot of formality around it, but it's because legislation has changed along the way then more opportunities have become available. And it's just like Anne pointed to, it's been a journey for a whole lot of people and things have changed along the way. And so decisions have been made 
on those changes. So it's um, possibly there was the decision for the housing and looking at how, how we could do that, how that would be done first. And then these other opportunities became available, hence the chip, the journey on the chip registration process. Totoko, auntie. Mm. Kia ora Shane, you're right, it is a journey and it's a similar journey for many but there are also many differences along the way so we're very pleased that over the, um, tomorrow we will be hearing from um, another author in Auckland who will share the difference on their journey.